Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. Um, in today's YouTube video, we are going to do we're going to show how to run simulations of the Kelly criteria. If you haven't already, go ahead and check out our medium post. I'll link that in the description below. But this will just be going over the very basic Kelly criterion modeling that we have up top in the article. So to start, we're, we are going to just run our imports. Um, I always do an import warnings to ignore those. And then we're also going to import pandas, numpy, math, and matplotlib so we can all see what that runs, what that looks like. So I'm just going to run those. Don't need to type those out for you guys. All right. All right, now I'm going to define a function for the optimal Kelly. Now the optimal Kelly is going to be the probability of a win minus the probability of a loss divided by the odds or payout. So the only things we really need are the win probability and the payoff ratio. And we don't really even need anything in the function. We can just go ahead and uh, return that value. And then I just want to make sure that this portion is by itself. And make sure that runs. Okay. Um, to test that code, we are just going, I'm just using a separate notebook here. I'll use the second one over here to kind of describe the formulas and, and what they're doing. So uh, I'll just copy this code over real quick and give you a look at what that code looks like before implementing it further. Just select run all. And then just as in the article, in the medium article, I'll go ahead and run that function with the exact parameter, with the exact uh, example we used in the article. So I said 70% chance win probability with six to five odds. So we'll show that. And then we'll print optimal Kelly. Point four five, which is what we exactly what we wanted. Uh, this is just due to some rounding issues. So we can see that this function is working, and now we'll build some simulations out of it and show what the results might look like compared to a continuous betting scheme. All right. Okay, let's build a simulation. And for this, we are going to use a matrix, a NumPy matrix that goes through a number of steps and can take in sims and starting capital. So to start, we are going to set up our matrix that captures the capital over time. So we'll start with zeros for the number of sims and the number of steps. And then we are going to fill that array with zeros. And then going to make the first step 
in those simulations equal to our R capital. In order to show what that might look like, I'm just going to run that code here. So I'm going to use some numbers that we use as, as the first simulation, but just to show you what these NumPy arrays make, I wanted to run that here. So the first one is going to be two simulations, each with 50 steps. So as we can see, there's two simulations here. So two rows with 50 columns each, which would represent the arrays. And then to show what this step looks like, we are just assigning that first, that first position in the column equal to uh, our starting capital, which in our simulation will be 100. So as you can see here, in both those simulations, we start with 100. Continuing on in our simulation build, we are now going to make a binomial distribution that can simulate our, tr our uh, trials, binomial. And for this, we want it to take in the size of the array, the probability, and, and then the size that the array makes. Sorry, to clarify, this one is the number of um, the number of trials. And then we want the array to come out looking exactly like our the size of this zero array. parentheses in here. Okay, and then we are finally going to change where the wins and losses are coming from this binomial distribution. We are going to change that to equal what would happen in our capital. So if the binomial is greater than zero, we are going to change it to one plus f, which would be our win. And if it's not, we're going to change it to one minus f, which would be our loss. So to show what that would look like, I'm gonna make that over here as well. One, and then in our first simulation, like I said, we're going to use those. So the wins will be 0.6, and the size, again, from up here is gonna be 250. So that's what it went ahead and did. It went ahead and did the binomial distribution with a 0.6% chance win rate and filled out an array of what wins and losses would look like. So one would indicate a win and zero would indicate a loss. In this next step, we are going to change in this binomial array what our capital would do if we did win or if we did lose. So let's we'll just take this. And in our first simulation, we're going to run 20%. So we're going to allocate 20% of our capital to any bet. So we would make this F.2 and 0.2. And to see what that would do, here it's just going to run. If it was a 1, it's going to change it to a 1.2. And if it lost here, it would change it to 1 minus 0.2, which would be 0.8. And then the final step in our simulation will be building a step through, uh, through the number of steps that 
for our capital will return a rounded new capital number depending on what the previous round did. So here we're going to take our capital array and we're going to take the previous iteration and multiply it by what the previous iteration did in the binomial distribution. So that is the matrix where we decided if the simulation won or lost, excuse me. So it's going to take this array essentially and multiply it by this array. So if it won, it'd be 100, uh, 120, and then it would take 120 and multiply by 120 again. So just to show that, uh, in range of 50 steps, we'll go ahead and run that, and then print S. Excuse me. So the first one, it starts up here at 100, and then hits 100, and then it multiplies by 1.2, which is 120. And then since it wins again, it multiplies 120 times 1.2, which is 1 point, or sorry, 144. The next instance it loses, so it will take this 144 and multiply it by 0.8, and it gets 115, and so on and so forth. So it ran that simulation twice, so in one instance, as you can see here, we end up with $348, and in the second instance, it lost a little bit more, so it ended up at 148 Okay, just had to remove an L here. Now that the simulation function is built, let's just go ahead and run some simulations. So won't bore you with typing them out. Basically what I ran in the article is I just ran a bunch of simulations going over with the same parameters with the difference being what the uh, what the bet sizing was. So for this first one, you know, I made the bet sizing 0.2, it made a 0.5, a 0.75, and then for the last one, I did whatever the optimal Kelly was. So I just took this function and plugged it into this first one because that's what Kelly says we should be betting. Again, as with this, with what I presented over here, I used a 0.6 win rate. We have 50 steps. For each of these first simulations, I'm running two simulations, and then for the Kelly, I ran four. And for all of them, to make it fair, we are starting with $100 capital. So just run that. Excuse me. Um, that's because I didn't run this. Okay, so that simulation ran. Last step here, we're just going to plot those results. And so I don't have to bore you with what that code would look like. This is just making a one, one subplot, figure size 15 by 10, and then plotting what all of those would be. We are inverting the results here just so it can scale properly on the X and Y axis. And then with the labels, we'll show what those look like in the legend. So we'll run that. And there we go. We can see that most of them <laughs> lost. Only the Kelly ended up winning uh, a pretty large amount on their bankroll. So, you know, it's this is going to run different every time uh, because each time the simulation runs, the binomial distribution is going to pop out different results. So we could run this again and this again. And we can see, again, we have different results. Uh, the Kelly did best here. And we can just run it one more time. And as you can see, it was all over the place. Uh, Kelly ended up winning here again with most of them uh, staying around z between zero and uh, looks like about $500. So this was a short tutorial on how the Kelly criterion function would look and a simulation of, of different bet sizings would look against the Kelly. 
In the next video, we'll go over a pretty in-depth view of how you can use this to build a trading strategy and what that would look like when trading the SPY against the historical data. So thanks for joining. Uh, be sure to subscribe, like, comment if you have any questions, and head over to our Medium if you'd like to read an in-depth analysis of what that looks like. Thank you.